welcome to the opening scene of turning up to the bank, cast into a showing fish, and we've ended up with one. Well, it's not a biggie, yeah, but it adds up for the carp challenge, doesn't it? For the opening scenes, we caught a nice little scaly banger, two and a half pounder. Yeah, lovely. That'll do nicely, won't it? On a miserable day, as it is, all the rain, all the wind. King not knock it. Right, well, I'm in the bivvy for that reason. Uh, I better get my jacket and whatnot sorted just in case. Because the last time I came here and it was this weather, well, if you if you remember, I could not stay dry. Yeah, but bear in mind, it was a different time of year. It was a bit warmer and stuff like that. I don't want to get my big fox one soaking wet. Even though I waterproofed it, obviously it all goes down as cuffs and it, it's, it like soaks up from there. So. I did originally have a Vaz one, but when I went to uh, France, obviously I had the full full system, obviously legs and uh, legs and top, and uh, I left it in someone's bivvy by accident and just never got it back. Yeah, so that's where that's gone. So I had to get myself a different one, uh, Storm Guard. Yeah, just a jacket. Yeah, it's green. It does the job. Yeah. But what I might as well do, just in case, I'm going to get the trousers on as well. Because obviously, like I say, the weather. It is meant to be turning for the better. Um, I'm going to do as much filming as I can. I wasn't actually going to do this as a carp challenge, but obviously that was the first carp I've had for the challenge, so I've got to. But the original plan... I can't even get it out of the back. I've got my trousers out, but I'll just try and get my jacket out. The original plan is... Um, I'm fishing with a old time mate, um, which is he's coming down tomorrow night. And I thought, well, I'll come on here. Yeah, it's Thursday, and I'll fish through till uh, Sunday, Sun Sunday morning, basically. There we are. I've got it eventually. It's a little bit down in the dumps. Uh, it's, it's personal things. Yeah, it's not for me to say and stuff like that. But he's going to be rocking up tomorrow. He won't go on camera. Yeah. So I'm going to be basically filming, obviously, just me sort of thing, if I can, as and when. The thing is, when you get wet, you, in this time of year, you tend to stay wet. And when you're wet, you also get cold. And you get very bloody cold. So that's the reason why I'm obviously getting geared up now, just in case I've got to make an adventure out there. Because last time it was like this, as I was saying, I struggled to even keep a rod in the water and it would literally fish after fish after fish and I did have the fox jacket on and as much as I tried hanging it up for it to uh, drain away I had to try and put it back on soaking wet so that's the reason why I originally bought the uh, this gear the vas gear like I say this isn't the vas the jacket but it, it does the same thing it's just just a waterproof jacket Alright, let's try and get this on. It's breathable on the back, the same. Costs a little bit more, even though it's not a brand. It did cost a little bit more, probably still got tags on, I don't know. But it's going on. There we are. We're on. So if I do need to make it a mad dash now, I'm going to stay a bit drier. Yeah. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to make a bit of a mix up. So what we have got here, is uh, mixed pellets, yeah, halibut pellets, uh, krill pellets, CSL pellets, literally all sorts, different sizes and all that lot. They're a little bit wet because I've got flavouring on them, and that's what I want to do. This this bivy is absolutely stinking now. In this one, I've got ground up hemp, yeah, crushed hemp basically, and then in this one, it's just my box standard base mix yeah what you make boilers out of so what we're gonna do we'll go with the base mix first 
we'll get a couple of scoops in there. I'll probably do a little, another one. So I'm not putting exactly full scoops in. Okay. Uh, because it's a little bit drier, we'll get the hemp. Put some of that in. Now, the base mix itself, it has already got hemp in there. But this is just obviously giving it that little bit more. And then obviously the pellets. Now, like I say, these pellets have got liquids in there and all sorts. All right. It's got Indian liquids in there. It's got fla uh, proper flavours in there. Left rod. I think it skimmers it in the line, looking at it. Right. Oh, that stinks. Yeah, absolute stinks. <clears throat> right. So, that'll do for that. So, we'll, we'll whack the lids back onto these. So, push them. That one over there. Base mix I'm going to need to keep out. So, I, I don't want to get a really lumpy sort of mix. I want to be able to make it into balls. Left rod again. Come on. Remember that line. Right, so what we need to do now is obviously get that mixed up. Yeah. So I'll put that on there. Just give me a little bit more foot room. And we'll give it a little churn around now. I can put lake water in there as well. Like I say, it's got liquids already in it. So that, that'll starch it up. I'm going to make it really dry because obviously that base mix is going to get in there. But as soon as I get some lake water in it as well, I'm going to be able to boil it. We've got some of that. So we'll put some of that in. Just to get more traction. And all I'm going to be doing really is putting a load over one rod. Yeah? Good dollar for that in. It smells even carpier now. I'll give that a, a stir up. Now I don't mind the liquid, uh, the powder, should I say, being quite dry because it gives it that up and down sort of mix. So there'll be some bits what float on the water, there's going to be some what goes down to the deck, and then there's gonna, also going to be some mid water. So it can travel because the wind itself, I ain't got a lot where I am, but if the water has got a bit of a tail on it, it can actually drift it away from me, actually bringing more fish to the area. All going well, that's the plan anyway. So I don't want to make it a really, really wet mix. Getting down there when you make a bucket like this, it's a bit awkward. You're better off with a round bucket. So I've got to get through the roach, which are like blooming piranhas in here. And then I've got to try and keep some bait down there for obviously Mr. Carparactus. Hence why there's bigger chunks and all sorts in there. Right then, so before darkness, yeah, because it's getting there, let's show you where we've got one. Got these rods then. So the right hand rod, oh look at my hands. Yeah, the right hand rod is here. Yeah. The middle rod, if you see that tree there, probably about 10 foot off of the tree this way. Yeah, so roughly about there. That's the stump peg over there. And it's straight off the cliff. <clears throat> right, so the left arm rod, like I say, my mate is either going to set up here or in the other swim. Now, yeah, let's have a look. Let me bend down because obviously I've got the tree also on my side as well. Just over there, you can obviously see this on the water. Yeah, there is actually. An overhanging tree, it's not this bush, this is obviously the one above me, so it could actually be. I'm trying to look at it through my little phone. It's literally just tipped that corner, seen it brush it, just brought it back a bit, it's all clear and it's dropped down, so ding dang do. So, as I said earlier, I'm fishing up until Sunday morning. Yeah, it's, I came Thursday, 
it is Thursday, I got here 4 o'clock, well I was here before that, um, probably about half 3 I was here, went round the lakes and all that sort of stuff, and then uh, obviously thought right, I'll, I'll settle on this peg, yeah, because I'm tucked up in the corner there, where I were in store Marwin, yeah, so I've got a net there, and I've also got one here, just in case it does go a bit bonkers. The wind has died down, thank God, yeah. But there is plenty of room behind moi for Paul if he wants to set up. Yeah. So the cradle can move, obviously over, and come out over here a lot more. There's, there is absolutely loads of room for him to obviously get his gear. It's not like we need to be going up and down there and whatnot, right? Loads of room. Looks light to you, on that, but it's getting pretty dark actually. To be fair, it's going to be head torch time soon. I did have to fish a mountain of line, and I've actually tucked it into a corner because I haven't got a bin bag set up at the minute. And I, if I can get round, because my biv is in the way now, let's get round here, and I'll show you this mountain of line. Right, and I'll tell you the little story about it as well. Right, so let's show you this. Yeah, now I spotted this just, let me chuck that down there in my bivvy. I spotted that just in this bush here. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get that out as I do. As I lifted into it, it was trailing. Go around here a bit more. Right through there and just over there. If you can see the duck, yeah, there, there's basically a tree in the water, and uh, it was trailing all the way to that. So I was like, wrapped it round my arm and all whatnot, pulling, pulling, pulling. And I'll tell you one thing, it's got a big, thick diameter on it, it's like 25 pound line, that's maybe 30. <sighs> yeah, pretty hefty line that. Anyway, yeah. So I pulled it all out and it actually snapped at the knot, obviously, from around the tree, which is good because it's obviously took all this line out of the water. Because there wasn't that much line in the tree here, it was only a little bit, and obviously that is how much I've retrieved. So someone's lost quite a bit of a spool. And I think what's actually happened, I don't think it's the way they've actually casted it, because like I say, it was in right in this tree. I think what's happened, obviously a fish has gone, obviously the fish has gone right on them, Obviously they brought the rod down a little bit too close, obviously ended up getting snagged in here. Lost control, obviously the fish has got round that snag. And then obviously they basically pinged for a break. And then just left it all down there. But I've sorted it out anyway. Yeah. So that can go down there now, so I can get that into my bin bag when I get it set up. Well, there's another line out of water, uh, like I say, this swim inside of me is actually closed off for maintenance, but when that swim is actually open, if that line was still there, it would have been like Vanslow, obviously when we're down at Farlow's, obviously a line going straight across, bowstring tight line, you ain't going to get a fish over it, yeah, you're not going to get a fish over it, so when that swim is fishing again, it's opened up that swim for the next angler, isn't it? And not only that, like I say, it's cleared it up as well. So, two two birds with one stone sort of thing. Alright, so this one weighs in at two pounds. Yeah. Not a big monster, but... I'll just literally put in those, uh, those balls. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll have to show you tomorrow now, because obviously it's dark. Come on, let's pick you up. Let's try and get hold of it. Little two pounder. But it's another one to obviously account, isn't it? Yeah. You all add up. Yeah, had a bit of a blanking spree. There we are. Yeah, time to make the fish look bigger. <laughs> now, nah, I'm tucked in as you can see. And that is what we got. Oh, now the right on rod's going. So we'll nick this one back in quickly. Nice little there. Uh, come on. 
not the prettiest you've won, but I say, they all count. We've made a boo boo on those two fish. Because it's been so long, I must have caught the dial. Yeah. So now that sling is wet, and I've zeroed it now. So it's zero. Yeah. I was under. Yeah. Or over, should I say. So all the fish what I had, I need to add on another pound. So that last one was three pound. The other one was two and a half. So now that's three and a half. I need to write these down. And that's because I didn't zero these right. Oh, early morning. Yeah, daft early morning. It's uh, half past two. Fast asleep, a few beeps, halted with the alarms. Worked out, I'm getting liners. But there's also a load of bats sitting in the line. And uh, yeah, also they're doing it. Um, but this was a melting take. Um, before this, um, probably about 11 o'clock, another melting take. Lifted into it, felt a little head shake. It, it was small, but felt a little head shake, and then it just fell off that one. But this one is seven pound on the nose. If it was bigger, I don't know where the moon's gone. It's not a full moon, but obviously, normally a moony night normally means a common. And funny enough, we've caught an angry one. I'm not knelt down. Come on, Mr. Angry. The seven pound common. A bit bigger. Like I say, I'm not, not holding it out or anything like that. I've just literally held it up. Quite a bonny fish for seven, isn't it? Get under its thing. <laughs> oh, it's cold. <laughs> oh, it is cold. No wonder why it's jumping with me touching it. Uh, let's get back. That smells like my mix. I reckon it's been gnawing on that. And funny enough, that is a right and rod where I did put a load of them balls. And uh, bait wise. And double bait again. Yeah. Let me get the bait. Just if I can show you. Where is it gone? It's down here. <sighs> See if the line will come over enough. Come on, you. You settle down. Inline drop off, lad. What's well, obviously dropped off. Same rig, same bait. Caught two fish, yeah. Just got to bring that round in place from the hook bead where obviously the fish has moved it. Bring that up bead back round, and it's good to go again, yeah. Sorry, Paul, but I have nicked one of your fish. Let's get the scales. <sighs> So we're still zeroed off. This is the biggest one so far. Just about to enter the scales. Well, let's read what she is. Oh, it's over ten. Do a bit more. Uh, Fourteen point one. Oh. Freezing cold. Let's get a rig over there. So fourteen point one pounds, then. Huh? I'm only doing this just in case I decide to put it on the challenge. If I don't put it on the challenge, 
then I don't, right? Well, it's a good session so far. Oh, it's slippery. There we are, 14.1. Tempting to sling this one. Get a better picture during tomorrow. But we won't. Yeah, we won't. We'll just slip her back. Ready to go. For another one, this is a left hand rod. Yeah. Right, let's get her back then. So peg 19 what I normally fish, there's, a, there's those uh, bushes what I, I got snagged up with that mystery fish. So I thought I'll put it near that, yeah, so that's what I did and obviously that's where the 14 pounder come from. But it still pulls swim when he gets here. He's not here yet, so obviously the lake is mine, yeah. Two people have just rocked up, right, um, well one, one person anyway, but I think they've come together. They came and looked at... Um, 17 and 18 uh, but they're booked out anyway um, for whenever it is meant to be today seven o'clock but it's gone that now and they're still not here so they've gone down the other end on the other double swim towards the lily pads and that but it's, it's a bit shallow down there not saying they can't catch down there because fish are all over the place but while it's cold they're normally deeper water all right so those guys still on on 17 18 there's no one no one down here whatsoever yeah so i'm going to do the same thing as what i did yesterday when i boxed up basically i'm going to put one knife over there the only difference is i've changed it over yeah i've changed it from a pop-up to the snowman hard hooker and then also my pink bait as well yeah as a tipper quite loosely fitted so it's got that separation, uh, the hard hooker is also bored out a little bit, you can see down the gap, you might not, just so the, that actually sits in there. And that's just using the countersink drill bit basically, that's all it is, with a uh, spawn float fitted on it. So what we're going to do, I'm not lining up for the sprigger, I'm basically just going pretty much up to the leader. I'm going to chuck it over there and uh, see what happens. I just want to rest this swim a little bit because I've had two rods in there. Yeah, I should pull the other one out, but it's giving it a little bit of line pressure less. Yeah, obviously, having two rods in there. There's been a bit of fizzing, a um, couple of skimmers and stuff like that, but I don't think there's really many carp down there at the moment. So I just want to take that pressure off, launch it over there. It's a prime spot, we'll see what happens from it. Yeah, it's the middle rod hasn't gone yet, all the others have, but the middle one hasn't. Right, the reason why I brought it back in, I've seen a second little splosh and I wasn't sure if the bait come off, yeah, so I just wanted to check it. It's blobbed on, it's, it's secure, it's still there, so it'll, just a little skimmer just topping it in the line of the cast sort of thing, but I'd rather check it in case of losing all the bait.
Right, so all the baits redone or recasted. Um, two rest in the swim. Um, they they've gone obviously one way you've seen, one bit further right from it. Not further, but obviously to the right hand. Left hand one went over to the bush, over there. Different bait. Took the yellow one off. Put one of my boosted um, SLKs on wafters. And resulted in this. Yeah. Eight pound. Nice little fat, stocky one. Bit of a lively, jumpy one as well. Depends why I can't pick it up. Alright, which side are you going? Come on. <laughs> can't get hold of it. Alright, are you going to behave? Ten cent. Ten cent. Yeah, I knew it was going to go. Come on, don't be camera shy. There we are, eight pounder. I'll show you the other side then. I think she wants to now. No, <laughs> I'll go back with you then. Right, put me under on that in a minute. There we are. All right. So I said eight pound. Do you know everyone? What I've had up to now has a decent mouth on it. No smashed up mouths. Show the other side then. Come on, don't want to keep that long. There's the other side. Yeah, got a bit of a girth on this one. Lovely. Slipper back, that's fish number five. Ah, I can't believe that. I literally just let that fish go. Just uh, put the rod back in the water, same bait and all. And then the right hand rod over there goes. So I just set everything up and then got this little four and a half pounder. Yeah, looks small for its weight, but as a guess weight, I would have said probably two pound, but the scales are zeroed. <laughs> it's a short little one, but it's to be fair, it's got it's got some shoulders. Yeah, four and a half pound. You'd never guess that, would you? Like I say, it's got some shoulders on it. It's got a bit of a belly. Yeah. I reckon they're coming in to spawn soon actually. It's normally around May, isn't it? May, June. Yeah. Nice little bar of gold. Well, any of the fish what I've caught, I wouldn't have normally weighed. So slide you up there, mate. Let's have a look. It's 4.2. Yeah, and they're still zeroed. Yeah. <laughs> Looking at it, I would have said probably a pound, maybe two. But it's a bonny little uh, scaly mirror again. It's got a few uh, battles on this one. Come on. All right, you're a bit further away as well, so it is going to look a lot smaller. <laughs> but I'm going to have to bring you closer just so you can see it. It is a gorgeous looking fish. Alright, let's go over this side. You've got sticks all over you now. Let's get them out of the way. I don't want them in there. It's like a bar of soap. Come here. <laughs> oh dear, come here. Alright, here you go, behave. Alright, let's try and do it. Yeah. 4.2 pounds. Yeah, all right. I'm not really leaning up. Yeah, arms like that. In line with my body, and all. Well, that's probably the best I can hold it. Left hand rod, again. Paul's grab no fish left by Tommy rocks up. <laughs> yeah, let's slip it back. Get some of that slime off me before I can touch the phone. All right, so while the sun is out, there's a few clouds coming. I thought I'd get the other chair out and have a sit outside behind the rods. Yeah, watch the rod tips, watch the water, because when I'm in there, I can only see literally basically pole swim. Yeah, that's all I can see because where I've angled it. And obviously, my rods, obviously, anyone comes down or messes about anything like that, obviously, I can see it all. <clears throat> but when I'm in the bivvy, I can't see my baited spot, which is literally 
right in front of me, three, three to four rod lengths, that is it. And um, what I thought I'd do, because I want to, I've actually made the rest of those bowls up, so that makes what you you see me do. I added a little bit of water in it to make it a little bit more sloppy. Put some in last night. Um, I did fish it, yeah, and I had a couple of fish off it. But I want to rest it, and the reason why I want to rest it is because these pegs over there and over there where I'm actually casting two virtually at some point they're going to be taken and then I can't do it now the left hand rod I'm not going to be able to put it over there because obviously Paul's going to be fishing there um, either on the, the same peg as me or the one outside of me the next peg there's plenty of room for him to fish here anyway if he wants to do it and then obviously we can have a proper chat and catch up I haven't seen him for a few number of years now so I've seen him at work, but it doesn't work at my place, it works at a different place. And he's now moved as well. So he's more about a chinwag really. He's meant to be coming tonight, later on after work. But these rods, obviously I can't put the left hand rod over there. I'm nicking all this fish while I can. <laughs> the right hand rod, I'm not going to be able to put that over there. Just in case someone sets up in that peg. And the middle rod, all I've done with that one at the moment, I've just straight down the middle of the lake. Not as far as I can get it. Well, it, it's gone down there a bit of distance. Yeah. And the reasons why I've done that, I want to open up more water. I know the fish are here, but I don't want to bugger them all off for the rest of the session. So that bucket, I've had literally made the rest of the bowls up, and I've actually put them all in the same spot. So it's just literally... A baiting spot, a baiting spot. Call it pre-baiting, yeah? That's all it is. There has been a couple of fizzers from it. It's now gone quiet. I can't can't see any fish. Um, I can see skimmers and stuff like that. I'm getting bugged out with flies, as you can probably tell. I've not really seen any carp really bosh out. There's been a couple of signs, but nothing like bosh straight out of water. I heard some activity last night and early hours in the morning uh, just before it got light and then one of them it was either on this bush on my right hand side behind the bivvy or it was in this corner over here which is going to be a pole swim it was one or the other i couldn't quite work it out and i was i was having a look see if i could see the ripple couldn't see no ripple oh right and rod again had a little uh, bounce on the rod tip so we'll see if that goes in a moment. But like I say, I want to rest this. I want to rest the baited area because that is where I'm going to have to put the rods later on. I'm going to have no choice. I'm going to have to put the rods in there. I've got to open it up for Paul. If that peg over there goes, I've got to open that peg up. So I'd rather the bait go in now and then just fish over the top of it afterwards. So I've had a few fish from it, so I can't grumble. So it's the lines itself, technically they're kind of going over it, but they are literally like right over the top of it sort of thing. So it ain't going to spook no fish anyway. Get off my bucket, duck. That thing kept waking me up. I wanted lame this morning. Hence why I put that pink PB, uh, that yellow PB on. Just one rod less. <laughs> Not to worry about it so much. But since I changed the baits back again, obviously they've been going. Yeah. So I got one on a single um, SLK wafter, which is obviously my mix on it, if you've seen it from the older vids. And then the right and rod, that is the same again, but it's got two on it. And then the middle rod is the uh, snowman type. And that just keeps literally getting darted here, there and everywhere pretty much. But these guys still haven't come on the left hand side. Meant to be booked out from 7 o'clock, but it could be 7pm. I'll find out when the bailiff comes around. It did say 7, but I didn't know if it meant 7 in the morning or 7 at night. <coughs> Just enjoy the bit of sunshine, what we're going to get today. Before it all turns into overcast and uh, drizzle, rain, whatever it's going to be. I can see the whole entire lake. All of it. So the other anglers, they set up down there on the right hand side. Uh, three more... Um, Youths, I'd call them, 
I set up on the right hand side of them, they did come right down here and then they, they went to this peg here and I thought, hmm, they might do. Get ready to bring in the two rods in sort of thing, so hopefully one was aiming up there and then the other one was aiming further out where you've seen it land. Get ready for bringing them in, but no, they never set up there, which has shocked me actually, I thought they would. I've heard a couple of beeps off the alarms down there, it could be where they've just been winding back or liners or something, but I've not seen no fish cut. They might have done, and just missed it while I've been in there, sort of thing. But these ducks keep pestering me, keep coming up on the swim. It's basically, obviously, like the pellets and stuff like that, what obviously they can find on the floor. That's all it is. Because some of them are made balls up, and then some are just squidged together, and then just throw it. Just give that a little bit of a spread. Give it a bit of differentness and with this pellets I did actually get early hours really early hours soon as soon as it just got light sort of thing proper light where you can see the sun actually just poking the horizon I actually just got three scoops and just scooped them in so just waiting for them to really get back on it before I'll actually put a rod onto it come on and say hello duck but I know Paul won't want to be involved, and if he does get on the video, he won't say, oh, yeah, he's, he is a bit camera shy. He's a brilliant lad, but he is very camera shy. So I'll try not to film him anyway. Alright, so this one's weighing in at 6.1. Another common. Quite a spiny anal tail as well. Bendy. There we are. So 6.1. Like I say, very, very spiny on its own off. Let's have a look at that. I don't know. I've never seen out like that before. It's not poking out or out like that, it's just it's like a perch. Like jagged on it, saying nothing. Come on, up again. Nope. Oh, sharp. Really sharp. Wants to cut you that. I'll do it so I'm not getting it. That's probably the best I can hold this one. I'm trying to get you in a better, a better view. Turn you off it. Where's your fin? There we go. There, sun's on it, all over. It's reflecting back on it. Six point one, I can take that happy days. Slipper back. Definitely gnawing on something with its girth. Right, so Vans is still on for the challenge. It's just it's awkward because he's had a babby and obviously he's a busy man with work and stuff like that. But he, he is going to get out there obviously as and when he can. And I've just literally had a tolly up. It is just over forty nine pounds worth of fish up to now since I've been here. Yeah, these are the only fish I do. I don't count the bream because bream don't count in the carp challenge. It is just carp only. Yeah, grass carp. It's still a carp. Yeah, I'll give that. Yeah, it's still a carp. So I'd say to catch grassy, then you can count it. Now bear in mind, he's down south. Yeah, and uh, to be all fair, it's a fifty pounder. It is possible, but you could actually overtake me in one fish yeah if, if he catches two 25s just two fish he's already beat me yeah so where i go it is mainly a smaller stamp a, a bigger stamp of fish but they are smaller smaller fish there is going to be a few other places on the cards as well um 
got Norton Disney actually what I'm looking at uh, memory lane as well memory lane is what I'm gonna call a bagger upper yeah this session is actually counting as a bagger upper but bear in mind I've uh, already done a couple we're both equal on one and then I've done another one a 24 hour at what is and that it was just a brief what doesn't count so the score is zero zero all the way through well it's not anymore is it because obviously I've had a few Am I worried now? It's it's all a bit of fun. Yeah, that's what it's for. The vans, you've got to get out there now and actually do some. <laughs> he did say to me last night, I didn't read it until the small early hours. You out again? With my work, yeah. If I've got holiday and I finished the holiday with the family and I've still got a bit left and getting out there, yeah, because I'm I'm really stuck to just weekends only. And um I can't do a full weekend, so I can't do 48 hours because obviously I've got to go to work on the Monday. I could go Friday night and, and do it like that, but it's it's awkward, isn't it? Yeah, it's, you still you've, you're roughly looking about probably 36 hours. So while I've got the time, I'm going to do it. But this wasn't really for the cart challenge. This was mainly to get Paul out and about. He's not here yet. He still might not even turn up. Yeah, I think he will, like because he's. He's really eager to get out. He hasn't been out for however long it is. He's had a few issues, personal ones, so it's like, well, come on then. Yeah, he invited me out, and it's like, yeah, I'll go. My original plan was to go Saturday. Yeah, but I got back from Blackpool Wednesday, Wednesday night, and I thought, sorry, I'll go Thursday. Yeah, so I did. Yeah, I'm here. All right, so another one. Weighing in at 9.9. .9. Another mirror. Strong fight off this one from the right hand rod. Oh, bit tense, bit tense. There we are. Stunning. Yeah, absolute stunning. Good size apple scales on it. It's been done quite a few times, like. Right? Slip her back, get the rod back out. Jobs are good. Right, I thought I'd show you a, um, a great way of using these line clips if you've got them. If you haven't got them, you can obviously uh, put them on anyway. Right, so I want to fish the line slack with my bobbin slack, but obviously I want it. So when that bob, when I get a reading, obviously it comes up and down. That's so. Yeah, where if it's slack without it, then it, that's basically on the floor. Yeah, and you're not going to get any drop back indication or anything like that. It's just going to be literally line going outwards. <clears throat> now with these. You can you can put them in, and um, you'll notice the way I've done it. Cause you can actually see a loop, right? Now the good thing is that if I strike into the rod, it will just pull out. Yeah. If the line goes, it will pull out, and then it will just go to basically normal clutch bait runner mode. If I wind, it's going to pull out. Now if I actually bring it over and down. If I wind, it's going to want to snap this clean off. Yeah, so that's the reason why I do that little tiny loop. If you can see it. Not only that, you can adjust it by the loop. So if you do want your hanger to come up a little bit more, you can just get your loop, pull the loop up, and obviously it's adjusting the bobbin. Right. Uh, as you can tell by the clouds above, it's gone dark and it started thundering and lightning as my rod goes. Anyway, I netted it quick and it's in the net and it's staying in there until that passes. It was a right flash of lightning, wasn't it? That was a fucking yeah. good one. Paul's here now. I don't know if you want to go on film or not. No, no, no he's I did say you were camera shy earlier. Oh, I can't turn any lights on yet because obviously they're all in the bivvy and whatnot, but look. That's what we've had. 
yeah nice clear skies that's obviously a bit patchy but this above us is jet black it's gonna absolutely annihilate it down with rain i can guarantee it i better sort that fish out before it pisses it down Anna. Yeah. right Here's the rain. What did I say it is? 11 6. 11 6. Yeah. And here's the rain. Paul said it's not going to rain. And it started. I could hear it, I could smell it. And when the wind starts, as it is, come on, you're getting wet. And I'm getting wet now. I might even get a hailstone. It's snowing. It's snowing, Mike. Yeah. Right, sorry about the light. She's not letting me pick her up one bit. So we have just caught a snow carp. <laughs> yeah. Can't turn the head torch off because obviously I'm holding a fish. <laughs> 11.6 pounds. Have it. Let's get her back. Shut up with your rumble. control again. We passed my two lines, took a fair and a short in and it went over the Paul's right hand rod, he's only fishing the tape. Under control. Well then there'll be a little one holding the bottom.
the net. In the net. So, last night, obviously we need to get that sorted, but she's fine as she is in the net, not going nowhere. It was an eventful night last night, obviously with all the thunderstorms, snow, hail, you name it, obviously we had it. So it's been all seasons in one session. Yeah, let me just try and clear the camera, so it's a little bit blurry, there we are. Nothing for me over the night, just the, the beach on the bats and stuff again. And um, after the uh, snow stopped, my middle rod had a beep on it. Then the left hand rod had a beep on it. And I said to uh, Paul, I went, keep an eye on your rod, mate. He's like, why? I went, that's a liner, what's gone through. Nudged my line, obviously nudged the left one. It's obviously going towards you. Before we knew it, he had a fish on. Yeah. And then uh, while I was asleep, he had another one. Right, it's all weighed up, 9.7. I thought it was a bit of better fight anyway. Well, you've seen it. You done? No, you're not done. So, give me a bit of a run around. And there we are, 9.7. Lean over the fish, make my head look bigger. <laughs> Can you not fault that? Yeah. Right, do you want me to put this in your swim? Can do. Can do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't moan. Yeah, it's been a cracking session. <clears throat> we had a good laugh as well. Last last night with that fish, with that storm coming over, absolute brick is like, that, get that, get that. I could um, looked over and seen the blackness. I could hear it coming. Obviously, where obviously the rain looked a bit of a distance because the wind's coming this way. Like, I could smell it. Like, this is going to give it some. And as I was picking up fish, it's like it's going to snow and else. So, um, and what happened? It did. The only thing we missed yesterday, weather wise, was a tornado. Yeah. And like hurricane sort of thing. Yeah. That was it. Other than that, we had it all last night. Look at it. Yeah whoever doesn't know what to do and it confuses them it confuses the fish but it is where it is you just got to make do and adapt to the situation is it worth having a move down to the other end yeah but i bet you there's no pegs down the other end but then during the night you need to be back down this end again Did it, did it, did it. Right, so I'm on my final night now. Um, we're going to be going down to minus one, minus two. It's, it's been quiet all day and uh, the guy in the corner yeah he's uh he's, he's done well he's had a couple i said about uh, when, when the overcast comes it should switch the fish and should bring them back down this end a little bit and um i said to basically put one on the snag over there and one underneath the snag on the other side and he listened yeah give him credit he listened and he had a 23 and a half pounder bang yeah proper scaling mirror really beautiful fish his missus come around and said um can you help us weigh it like yeah no problem so paul was still here so he just literally just watched everything over just to be on the safe side got the fish in the sling face the numbers towards him picked it up 23 and a half i went well done mate yeah ever so grateful for obviously letting me help him out and stuff like that they, they asked for the help anyway but they were grateful for obviously doing what i did i don't know if it was a pb or not like but gorgeous fish and uh it is the very first time for me on this complex to actually see a 20 plus come out actually on the bank and um i felt privileged for obviously being there and just seeing it basically 
So, gorgeous fish, absolutely stunning. So, well done. And he had another one as well, I can't remember what he said the other one was, I thought, well, definitely well done on that. Right, so, we've had a really epic battle. Not only that, all three rods have gone. I've been wanting this middle rod to go for since I've been here. Yeah, left rod, right rod, left rod, right rod, left rod, right rod. Yeah, well, finally, the middle rod has ripped off. That's one that's had all the heavy bait. And when you look at this fish, it is full of it. Yeah. It's weighing in, uh, dead on, 16 pound. It doesn't look like it's been done many times at all. Right, now, let's see, because it is a lively one, it was lively in the water and it's lively here as well, let's see if I can hold her up, alright, dead on, 16 pound, yeah it's tensing, hang on, yeah, I knew it would go for it, I'll try again, now it tense. Come on, I've got you. Right, now my hand is actually covering its girth. I'm having to lean back <laughs> so you can actually get the fish in shot. I'll get the gut on that. What a battle. Alright, there's not really many carries. It sticks to the fish. This side is just as good as the other side. A couple of little spots down there. There it's anal thin. There we are. Lean back. Just try and keep it over the cradle. 16 pound. Not a monster. But when you've been working hard on a spot and really hard keeping the bait going in keeping the rods going onto it there you go right just before dark as well over the moon right zip both sides up bigger fish it's definitely both sides zipped and away we go Panda. I was quite shocked actually, I thought it was smaller. I thought it was probably two. <laughs> but no, it's an eight pounder. Mm -hmm. There we go. Can't be eight. Yeah, it can't be eight. I'm checking that. Definitely eight. I didn't lift it all the way, but it's definitely gone up to eight. Quite shocking. Middle rod. Come here. Angry. It's trying to cover its eyes over and all sorts, and it's not having it. Turn that off. Right, I'll try and show you them. There we are, a little eight pound common. Well, it's not having any of it, so it's going back in the water. Morning. Now, you guys know all of these fish I wouldn't normally weigh, but I'm only weighing them for the challenge because I need to get an accurate number. Now, I can't just go guessing them now. If anything, I would have guessed this one is one pound. But it's coming in at three, so that's three pound more on the list, isn't it? I don't even know how if you can hold it up. <laughs> I did have another one last night, but I'm not counting it. It was 
like that. Yeah. Could have fit it in a Ridge Monkey bucket. Three pounds on them. Head on. Not an ounce over, not an ounce under. Three pounds. You can put it back. All the effort. That was right around this time. It's been a while since they've gone. Well, before that fish went, all that lot was out there where I basically been putting the bait. So I think you can agree. It's been a bit of fizzing. <laughs> yeah. It's drifted in towards me a little bit. It's still out there. It goes further out. It goes up to there. You can just see it. it looks like weed on top there, but it's not. It's actually all the fizzing. So, yeah, they've been out of the north. Anyway, that is ready. Have it. Well, as you guys know, today is the last day. Yeah. I've just checked the weather forecast and um, it's not forecast no rain. It's jumped up to two Celsius now. It's actually been down to minus two. And, uh, oh, which one's that one? Right rod. Wait a minute. It stopped. So it could just be a liner, but we'll, we'll see if it comes. Uh, that's where the last one come from, the right rod. I just hope it's not a, a shoulder smaller carp. It's probably just a liner going through or something. crayfish back on the move but there's not I don't think there's as many crayfish as what they used to be sort of thing not really getting done in so much um the middle rod the the little tiny fish what I didn't put on camera I've not even recorded it down for the challenge like I say it was, it was small it could fit in one of them clear ridge monkey buckets yeah it was more like a fish pond fish yeah what you put in your garden that's why I haven't recorded that one. I know, I know they all add up and stuff like that, but it's just like I could, I could nearly lift it with a rod. Yeah, it was, it was that small one. I didn't. I was still netted it, Mike. But yeah, there was no point in doing that. It was just, it was get back in bed. Yeah, that was uh, about three, four in the morning that one. Was. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cold, so using the up to try and warm up my hands because I haven't brought no gloves with me but I'm fully layered up yeah I've got my winter kit down there my clothing I've got another jumper there but I ain't put it on I'm like the Michelin man yeah I've got a t-shirt on long sleeve t-shirt I've got my body warmer on underneath this I've got my hoodie on and I've got my coat on but the problem is is because I've got a, a really nice good quality warm bed and it's bloody cold. Right then, well as you can probably tell, a lot of the gear is down and uh, it's loaded up. One load has gone to the car already, pulled the rods in, took that load, just saved me having a mountain's worth of barra. And uh, what I did, I put two rods out instead of three. Now, both rods are on this bit in the middle. Yeah, so, where are we? There's my rods, there's my rods. So they're just literally here. Yeah, there's not a lot of distance between them, probably four to six foot. Yeah. Bring around here a bit. Like I say, there's about four to six foot between. But the bivvy's away, the bed's away. Uh, bivvy and bed's still actually on the barra. All the bags really are at the car, apart from a brew bag. Try to dry that out from an absolute colossal session. Uh, sling behind me. Try to dry that out. Net one in that tree, net two in this tree somewhere. Oh. No. Where is it there? Ground sheet dried off as best as I can get it from obviously the underneath and that lot. Now bear in mind, obviously that was soaking wet underneath when I got here. Yeah, it were a little bit damp, but it wasn't that really bad. But obviously we had that bit of rain and all that lot, obviously that's gone underneath, um, the way my peg is it's actually on a slight angle so you know what it comes underneath. 
But with they, every day that you go and shoot, what you got to bear in mind is obviously that would be rising down coming up into your baby cord and condensation causing you to stay even more cold. Those ground sheets work, yeah, just stops that rising down, it just gives you that extra barrier. Well, everything's got wet again. There's another one in there, isn't it? Not a big one. Two and a half. But the adult is still bigger than that other one, like what I didn't bother away. But I'll tell you one thing. Right, even though it's small, look how fat it is. Probably hold this up by one hand. Bring it down there a little bit. Behaving. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Nice little fish. Mm. Doing really well, actually. Oh, yeah, you woke up now. <laughs> I can't do any better than that. That's it, that's all we get. Right, well, let's put the brake on. Missed it. There we are. Right, so, what a session, yeah? There's been some nicer fish and there's obviously been some smaller, so a mixed bag. Yeah, so all in all, what I've recorded for the challenge is 15. Yeah, so come on, Vans, you've got to get your arse in gear now, mate. Yeah, <laughs> bear in mind, it's only spring, it's still cold. Yeah, bear in mind, it was minus two last night, wasn't it? So, yeah, if you're in summer months, you're holding off for the easier times. <laughs> now, I know where it is, he's obviously working, he's a busy man, babby, and all this lot, so it's fair enough. But when he does get out, it is going to be easier fishing. So, all in all, what I've counted is 15 fish, but I did actually end up with 16. Um, I could say the other one itself, it was that small, I thought, there's no point setting up the camera and all this sort of stuff. Just to literally take a, pic, a little video of a fish, what you're barely going to see, because it was only like, yay, big. So, there was no point, probably a pound or something like that, but like I say, it's not recorded for the challenge, so that, you got a free one there, Vance. But I'm all geared off now. Uh, I'm going to basically chuck this lot in the car, have a little natter to the uh, lads on the other side. They just popped round, just had a quick one. I said, well, I'll chuck this in the car and I'll have a better chat with. So that is me done, guys. So if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, write your comments below. Yeah, by all means, write your comments below. And um, I do read them, but I'm actually now setting them to every Saturday. So the comments will go live every Saturday. So that's what I'm doing now. Right, okay. Let's get a break off. Let's get pushing this beast. On the next one. See you later, guys. The beast.